Okay, so we're, we're also interested in, in the sustainable ag agriculture and doing something with that to produce more sustainable biofuels. So it all goes in a circle. Uh, what we're interested in here, in, in the United States right now, uh, we're all, most of our biofuels come from corn ethanol. And in my view, corn ethanol is not sustainable. In fact, it's just been in fairly recent history, last 10 years maybe even, that you got more energy out of eth corn ethanol than it took to make it. Uh, it used to be a little close to one-to-one, -one, break even, which is not sustainable, obviously. You're taking good... Uh, uh, productive farmland out of food production and making an energy product out of it that's just breaking even. So, so clearly that's not sustainable in anybody's eyes. Uh, we would like to improve that. Now with improved agricultural practices you can get, although we still don't, we, we still don't do it, but it's possible uh, to get about 30 percent more energy out than you put in corn ethanol. A little bit better, but you're still taking productive food land, food uh, crop land out of food production and putting it into fuels, which makes no sense. Shortages. So what we're interested in is can we produce a biofuel from uh, a crop that can be grown on non-productive soil and with, uh, with his uh, sustainable agricultural practices, we believe we can take his uh, <coughs> biosolids and, and put them on uh, non-productive soil. So a lot of uh, ground in, the, in Arkansas is just used for fescue, feed it to cows. Uh, it's not good for much of anything else, but sweet sorghum, which we see here, uh, can grow on non-productive soil. So we're not, if we, if we do this, we're not taking anything out of food production, maybe a little bit of hay, but we can put some of this back and feed the cows so, so you, can, you can at least break even there. But with 30% more energy out than you put in for corn, this is about 10 times more energy out than you put in. So you just squeeze the stalk. This stalk is about 50% syrup. You squeeze it right out and you ferment it and you can make ethanol. Just like you make uh, wine. You squeeze the grapes and you ferment it and make wine. It's the exact same thing here, but we're not making sorghum wine. I don't know if anybody's ever tried that. I doubt it. It's very good. What we then do, so we've got our ethanol. What we then do is we take the stalks that are left and we grind them up, dry them and grind them up, and we have a like sawdust right here. We can take that sawdust and heat it very, very rapidly to heat it to a thousand degrees in about two seconds and pyrolyze it. This is, it it's, this is in the absence of oxygen so it doesn't burn and it's called pyrolysis. What you do is you basically are vaporizing the wood. You're vaporizing the biomass. You then condense that vapor as fast as you can and you convert this uh, sawdust into a bio oil which you have here and you see a little bit of water floating on top of that oil. It's a very, very uh, viscous, nasty, low heating value oil. You can't even, you might be able to light it, but it has a very low heating value. It doesn't even want to burn. So a lot of people thought, well, we can make these oils and we can sell them to power plants and they can burn them. Well, it, they won't burn, but it is an oil. So you're partway there. Our interest is transportation fuels. You can take this oil and uh, through a catalytic process, run it over a catalyst bed with hydrogen and hydro treat it, much like they do with, uh, or used to do with vegetable oils. Uh, you hydro treat it and you, you upgrade that oil. Um, there's still a lot of oxygen bound into it. And you remove that oxygen it, with the hydrogen, it makes water. And when you've got all the oxygen out, you make a pure organic phase. And you can see this is some of our early, uh, I wanted to show you this because we made very little oil, but we did make an organic layer from this. Uh, and all of this is still an aqueous phase. There's still a lot of material in there to, to be hydro treated out. But this organic layer that is formed is a gasoline blend component. It's low octane, so you wouldn't put it straight into your, uh, into your tank, but it can be blended with typical uh, uh, petroleum-based gasoline. So it is, it's, its average carbon is about six, so those are C6s, which is right in the sweet spot of gasoline. And so we have a biogasoline, so we can take uh, the biosolids, produce a, a plant that does not take productive farmland out of food production, and we can make ethanol and a, uh, and a, a biogasoline out of it. So here's a picture of our pyrolysis unit in our laboratory that we use to make this oil. And here's a photograph of the, uh, 
hydro treater that we use to upgrade this oil into that organic layer that you see there. Another advantage of this, when you make ethanol, you have to distill that ethanol out. Now it's only uh, maybe 10, when, when you squeeze that and make ethanol, it may be 10% ethanol. You've got to have 95% ethanol to get into the, into the, uh, the uh, fuels market. So you've got to distill all that water out and that's very costly. Here when you make the organic, it just naturally separates from the water. So you don't have to vaporize all that water and put all that energy into it. So there are an, an enormous number of advantages for using sweet sorghum for biofuels as opposed to uh, corn ethanol. Uh, the first part, the ethanol, they're doing in, uh, in Brazil. They squeeze the sugar cane and they produce ethanol and they're very successful with that. Um, we use corn and it's not, not, in my view, not sustainable at all. I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any. Yes? So, I have heard that this one is like the new alternative to corn, like it's much better and all of that, but why is it we haven't started, like, are, or are we starting to switch over to this, like, why aren't we? Uh, well, I, I, I don't know. A lot of inertia, I'm assuming, on uh, on corn ethanol, just to get people to think about it. This politics in corn ethanol. A lot of pol an enormous number of politics yeah. in corn ethanol. What we have here is, if we can do this on non-productive land, we may not have the same battles to fight. Yeah. You convince a farmer that's making very little money off raising fescue, and show them that now maybe you can make. Uh, we can produce by the combination of ethanol and pyrolysis, we can produce about 600 gallons of transportation fuel per acre. Well, that's a lot of potential new revenue to somebody who's right now, maybe it's $25 an acre for, for, for fescue. It solves a lot of problems in addition. It, it solves a lot of problems and you give uh, farmers, particularly in this part of Arkansas that have a lot of this non-productive soil, now you give them an, a, a way to make a lot more money. They're not gonna resist it. Uh, there's just gotta be, a, uh, uh, an extension yeah. uh, to get it out there. We have to turn everybody